Hello, my name is Kyle Robinson Young, or also known as Shama on the Internet. Um, today I'm going to give you an introduction to Voxel.js. Um, it's a really cool project. Uh, first thing you need is Node.js. So just go to nodejs.org and install. Pretty simple and straightforward. Um, once you have that, then let's go ahead and create a game. So let's say, make directly my game, and then we'll init our package.json file. This will ask us a bunch of questions. We can just ignore it. That's okay. So now we have our package JSON file. Now we can install some things to get going. So let's install Voxel Engine. npm install Voxel Engine, and we're going to save it to dev to save into our dev dependencies in our package JSON file. Um, that way, later on, you can just do npm install and installs everything all for you. So now let's open up. So we have our package.json file. Now let's just create the entry point for our game. And we'll just call this index.js. So from here, since we installed our voxel engine, let's include, let's require it here. So let's say create game equals require voxel engine. All right, and now use that to create our game, like such. Okay, so this alone, of course, won't run on a browser. So what you need to do is use a, another module called Browserify. And this essentially just traverses all these require statements and bundles it up into one file that will run beautifully on the browser. So you can install that with npm install Browserify, and then install it globally, and that gives you access to the command. So you can do Browserify and index.js, and their output will say bundle.js. This will go through and create our bundle. And so this is the actual file that runs on the browser. And so we can include that by creating an HTML file. So Okay, so let's create our HTML file. Index.html. There we go. All right. My game. Script source. And we'll reference our bundle.js that we have exported. Okay, so now we can open this index file. And you'll notice nothing happens. So what we need to do is we actually need to put the game into the index file. So to do that, game has a method called uh, append to. So first we have to say, OK, we need a container. This can be a div. An easy way is just say document body. Just append it to the body tag. And so then we'll say game append to container. All right, so now we'll go back and browserify that again. Refresh. Hey, look, we have a game that has nothing in it. <laughs> so what we need to do now is we need to put a player in the game to actually move around and do things. So with this, you can say npm install voxel player. Use save dev, save to our back and JSON file. And then we can go back into our index and we'll say, okay, we'll use a create player function and we'll say require voxel player. And we got to pass it a copy of the game. You're going to see that a lot. Uh, essentially, most modules need a copy of the game to access like 3JS and a bunch of other stuff. So you'll see that a lot. Okay, so now we'll call our player dude. Create player. And so this. This uh, is just a texture, and since we don't have a texture, um, we'll just put in a pretend one. All right, now we need to put the camera in the player. Um, so we'll call a function called possess, and this will make the camera follow the player around as you move. All right, so with this, we can browserify. Now we'll bundle it up, and we go back to our game and refresh. 
All right, still nothing. So let's move our player up. We'll take the yaw position. We'll set the X, which is side to side, the Y, which is up and down. So we'll do 100 units up. And then the X, or the Z, sorry, is directly out in front of you. So this will essentially move him uh, straight up. Bundle it up, refresh. All right, there we are. Now we're on top of our world, and there's no textures. So everything's black. So what we can do is we can go ahead and add textures. So to do that, so before we do the textures, actually, let's, uh, you might already be annoyed with having to type browserify um, over and over and over every time you make a change. Uh, Browserify does have a watch, um, but there's another module that makes this a lot cooler. It's called Browser B5. It's a wrapper for Browserify, um, made by Chris Dickinson. Uh, so uh, let's install that. npm install browser B5, and we'll save that into our dev dependencies. So what this one will do is rather than uh, you know, compiling every single time, it essentially creates a server that um, sits there and listens. And then when you give it a file that, uh, a JavaScript file, it will compile it with uh, Browserify and give it to you on the fly. So to do that, let's add something to our package.json here. Um, let's say scripts. And then I'll just paste that in from another project I had. And so all this is saying is that we're opening on localhost 8080, just to let us know what we're doing. Then it's going to run the browser v5 uh, binary on our index file on port 8080. So now we can just do npm start. That will open up the localhost 8080. And so rather than this, you say localhost 8080. And then if you look here, it will compile uh, our file for us with Browserify, and we have our game. Okay, so now let's fix these textures. So we'll go back into index. We can ignore bundle now, that it just bundles it on the fly. So now let's add a, our textures. So we need to specify where the textures are. So we'll say texture path, and we'll just say textures. We'll just create a folder called textures. And so let's create that folder. All right. So now let's copy in uh, textures from another project. Um, say copy, let's do voxel snow. Um, as an example, textures, all of them. Say textures, go into the bear. Okay, so now we have a bunch of textures. So by default, the voxel engine, if you don't specify any textures, um, it will try to load a grass, a dirt, a uh, brick, and a obsidian, I believe. Um, so now we have that. We can say npm start and refresh. And there we go. We have our textures. OK, so one thing to keep in mind when working with Voxel.js, it is under very heavy development. Uh, so expect things to break. Um, and if something does break, uh, it'd be nice if you can go to the author of the module um, and let them know uh, what, what happened. Um, or even better, uh, actually look into it yourself and send a pull request. It would be very much appreciated. But just um, you know, understand that things are going to break a lot because this is very new stuff and it's under very heavy development. OK, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or find me on Twitter, GitHub, whatever. Um, I like to hear from people, so let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Enjoy.